Alright, in this video we're going to take a look at how to balance redox reactions using the half reactions method and we'll practice both the acidic and basic version. Um, the steps were given in your notes but here they are again. If you don't already have them you can pause the video and write these steps down. Um, it'll be a little confusing at first but once we look at the example the steps should make more sense. So the first thing we're going to do is, given, a balance, given an unbalanced equation, is we're going to split it into two half reactions. That's why it's called the half reactions method. One of the two half reactions will turn out to be the reduction reaction, while the other will turn out to be the oxidation reaction. You don't need to worry about that at the beginning. It'll become clear at the end which is which. Once we've split the re original equation into two half reactions, in each of the half reactions we'll go through a series of steps, and it's important that they get done in this order. First, we'll balance everything other than hydrogen and oxygen in those reactions. Then, because the reactions were not complete, because they were skeleton reactions, we'll be able to balance the oxygens by adding in water the reactions are going to occur in an aqueous solution in water with acid in them, so the reactions will be able to be balanced by adding water as we need to. We'll balance hydrogen similarly by adding hydrogen ions, H+, again because the reaction is happening in an acid solution. Then we're going to balance the charges. That's a little bit different. We're not used to balancing charges. We're going to do that by adding electrons to the equation. Electrons will be represented as E- minus in the reaction. Finally, we'll try to balance the electrons themselves by multiplying the two equations by appropriate coefficients to make the electrons equal so that when we recombine, the electrons will be cancelled out. So we'll practice this with a couple of examples. So you could, if you think you know what you're doing, you could pause this video and then try the example yourself. Okay. Um, the first example is going to be done in an acid solution, and the second one in a basic solution. So first of all, in an acid solution, we have chlorine reacting with thiosulfate to produce chloride and the sulfate ion. The first thing we were told to do in those steps was to split this equation into two half reactions. The first reaction will involve the chlorine, Cl2. I'm going to leave some space because we'll be adding things as we need to. Cl2 becomes, and looking at those two products, it becomes Cl-. The second half reaction will involve the thiosulfate, S2O3, 2 minus, and it becomes sulfate. So you can see basically we took one reactant and wrote that it becomes one product and likewise the other reactant becomes the other product. And it should be clear which becomes which, right? Cl2 does not become SO4, for example. Now that we've split the equation into two half reactions, we're going to go through the series of steps in each half reaction. So first, balance everything other than H's and O's. So we'll put a 2 in front of Cl- minus to balance the chlorines, and we'll put a 2 in front of SO4-2- minus to balance sulfurs. Next, we'll balance oxygens, and we're going to do that by adding water to the equations. The first reaction has no oxygen, so it doesn't need anything done to it. The second equation has three oxygens on the left, and 2 times 4, it has 8 oxygens on the right. So if there's three on the left and eight on the right, we need five more oxygens. But those waters are good, those oxygens are in the form of water, so we're going to write plus five H2Os on the left-hand side of the second equation. Now we'll balance hydrogens, but we'll do that by adding H+. And we're adding H+, because this reaction is happening in an acid solution. The first equation has no hydrogens in it, so it's okay. The second one, though, has 5 times 2. It has 10 hydrogens now on the left side. It has none on the right. So we're going to put plus 10 hydrogen ions on the right-hand side of that second equation. Now we've balanced all of the atoms in these two equations. It's time to balance the charges. In the first reaction, on the left, we see just Cl2. And so Cl2 is neutral. There's no charge here. 
on the left side is zero. On the right hand side we have two chloride ions and each of the chlorides is minus one so we have minus two on the right hand side of that equation. Two times minus one is minus two. Notice that the left hand side is more positive than the right hand side. Zero is more positive than negative two. It's higher up on a number line if you think of it that way. We're going to balance the charges by adding electrons and electrons are negative. So we want to add them always, always, to the side that's more positive. So in this case, we're going to add them to the left-hand side. Our goal is to make the charges equal on both sides. So if this were zero, we, if we add two negatives, two electrons, now both sides are minus two. And so the charges are balanced on the left and right. In the second half reaction, we see one thiosulfate it has a charge of two minus and five waters and they don't have a charge so they're neutral so right now the second equation has minus two on the left the right hand side has two sulfates and they're each minus two so two times minus two gives me minus four and then we have ten hydrogens ten times one is plus ten so if we have negative 4 and positive 10, that's going to combine to give me positive 6. So right now we have positive 6 on the right-hand side over there. Negative 2 on the left and positive 6 on the right. To fix that, we'll add electrons to the right-hand side, the more positive side. 6 and negative 2, the difference is 8, so we'll add 8 electrons, and now both sides will have charge of minus 2. So now both sides are equal. It's purely a coincidence that in these two reactions the charges were the same on both sides, minus 2, minus 2. All right. The final thing we want to do before we recombine is to make the electrons equal in the two equations. The first equation is gaining two electrons. I can tell it's gaining because the electrons are on the left side. Whenever you see them on the left, you know they're being gained, and gaining electrons is reduction. The second equation shows the electrons on the right-hand side. That means they're being produced or lost, and losing electrons is an oxidation process. The electrons being lost have to equal the electrons being gained in any balanced redox reaction. So if we've got eight electrons in the second equation and only two in the first, we'll have to multiply the first equation by four, so now there'll be four times two, eight electrons in both equations. Now we can recombine, and when I recombine, I'll write the final equation down below, and I'll do it in the order that the original skeleton equation was given. So first, the chlorines, four times one, there's four Cl2s. Then the thiosulfates, we have only one of them, so plus S2O3, 2 minus. I'll leave some space because we may have to deal with hydrogens and uh, hydro and uh, waters. Then the chloride ions, we have 4 times 2, we have 8 Cl minuses. And then the sulfates, we've got just two of them, so 2 SO4, 2 minuses. And now how about the waters? Well, we've got five here on the left, and there's no waters in the first equation, so just five H2Os on the left. And hydrogen ions, there's none in the first equation, but we have ten in the second equation, so plus ten hydrogen ions on the right. And there's our balanced equation in an acid solution. The steps were kind of complicated, but look at these coefficients, and I hope you can agree that if you had tried to simply balance that equation by inspection, the way you would have done in grade 10 or 11 chemistry, um, that would have been very, very difficult to come up with. This, step, this process is um, complicated, but it leads to the right answers all the time. The second example is a basic solution. The difference is that we can't end up having, as we did here, hydrogen ions in our equation. Hydrogen ions are only found in acid solutions, right, in large concentrations. So if we have a basic solution, we have to get rid of these hydrogen ions and replace them with hydroxide ions, OH-. So 
So the basic process is to go ahead and balance this equation as though it were in an acid solution, and then we'll fix it and make it basic at the end. So we're going to go through the same process that we just did in an acid solution. So first, split your reaction, CrOH3 becomes CrO4 2 minus. Those both have chromiums in them, so that must be the reactant and product. And the second one, ClO3 minus, becomes Cl minus. They both have chlorines in them, so they, they would go together. Now that I've split the two reactions, I'm going to balance everything except hydrogens and oxygens. So looking at the chromiums, they're balanced. And looking at the chlorines, they're balanced, so we're good. Now we're going to balance oxygens using water. There's three oxygens here on the left. There's four oxygens on the right. So the first equation needs one water molecule on the left. The second equation has three oxygens on the left and none on the right. So it needs three water molecules on the right. The hydrogen ions, to balance the hydrogens, we have three hydrogens here in the first reactant and two more here in the water. So there's five hydrogens on the left. There's none on the right. So we'll fix that with five hydrogen ions on the right. There's six hydrogens here on the right in these waters, and there's none on the left here. So we'll fix that with six hydrogen ions on the left. Now we'll fix the charges. And I'm going to do this in my head, and I'll just talk it through. I'm not going to write it down. We have no charge on the left in the first reaction. Everything there is neutral. On the right, we've got five positives. That's plus five. But then we have this negative two. So five positives and a negative two. We've got three positives in all here. So zero on the left and three positives on the right. We add the electrons to the more positive side. So I'm going to add three electrons to the right to make both sides zero. So now they're both equal. The second equation has one negative and six positives. So it's got plus five on the left. It's got one negative on the right. So plus five and one negative. The left-hand side needs to have six electrons added to it. So now both sides are minus one. All right, we've got everything now balanced, hydrogens, oxygens, everything other than hydrogen and oxygen, and charges. Before we recombine, though, we have to make the electrons cancel out. The first equation has electrons on the product side, so it's an oxidation reaction. They're being lost. The second equation has electrons on the left side. It's a reduction reaction. They're being gained. The electrons lost and gained have to equal. So if we take the first equation and multiply by 2, then we'll have six electrons in both of them. Now we can recombine. Now recombining here is going to be a little more complicated than the previous example, because notice that there's water in both equations, and they occur on opposite sides, so they'll cancel out a little bit. There's also hydrogen ions in both equations, so they're also going to have to cancel out a little bit. So let's do this carefully. And again, I'll put it in the order that the original reaction was given. So first, two times this. We have two CrOH3, two of the chromium hydroxides. Then we've got one chlorate, ClO3 minus. I'm going to leave space to deal with those hydrogens and waters. The chromates, we have two times that. We have two times one, two chromates. And we have one chloride. So now, what about the hydrogens and, and waters? Let's start with water. In the first equation, two times one, there's two waters on the left. In the second equation, there's three waters on the right two on the left and three on the right. We can't have water on both sides, so we'll subtract the smaller number from each side. So if there's two on the left and three on the right, we'll subtract the two from both, and we'll end up with one water on the right-hand side. 
hydrogens, same thing. We have 2 times 5. We have 10 hydrogens on the right, and we have 6 hydrogens on the left. So with 10 hydrogens on the right and 6 on the left, sub subtracting the smaller number, 6, from both sides, that leaves me with 4 hydrogen ions on the right-hand side. So there's my balanced equation in an acid solution. And notice we can easily check that it's balanced. We have two chromiums and two chromiums. We have three times two, six oxygens, plus three is nine oxygens. Two times four is eight, plus one is nine oxygens. Hydrogens, we have three times two is six. And over here, we have four and two, six. The chlorines, one and one. And charges, there's a negative 1 on the left, that's it. On the right, we have 2 times 2 is 4 negatives, plus 1, we have 5 negatives. But then we have these 4 positives, and so there's a total of negative 1 on both sides. This equation is completely balanced. Now, the problem is, it's balanced right now in an acid solution. I can tell because it has these hydrogen ions in it. We were told to balance it in a basic solution. So we have to get rid of these hydrogen ions. The way to do that is to add an equal amount of hydroxide ions. So I'm going to add four hydroxide ions. Now, if I've added four hydroxide ions to the, to the right-hand side, I need to add four hydroxide ions to the left-hand side. Otherwise, it won't be balanced anymore. Now, what happens when you have four hydrogens and four hydroxides? Well, together, they combine, and they make four water molecules. So we just added an equal amount of hydroxide as we had hydrogen, and together, that became an equal amount of water. Now, in many reactions, this water that we've just produced would cancel with some water that was on the other side of the equation. So we have to be careful to check that. Here, though, there's actually water on, both, on the right-hand side. We had one water before, and now we have four more. So we'll add that together. So here's my overall balanced equation. Two chromium hydroxides plus the ClO3 minus plus those four hydroxides we just added and now it's going to be in a, in a basic solution. Produces two CrO4, two minuses, plus Cl minus. And instead of one water, we've now got a total of five waters, so plus five H2O. So there's balanced in a basic solution. Again, just look at what I did. First balanced in an acid solution then neutralized my hydrogens with an equal amount of hydroxide. But I had to add that to both sides of the equation. Hydrogens, hydroxides combined to make water. And then finally, I just checked to see what happens with that extra water. Here, it simply combined with the other water that was there to give five waters. Sometimes it would cancel with water on the other side of the equation as well. So there's balancing in uh, redox reactions with the half reaction method in both an acid and a basic solution. Every time you do a step, be sure that you are constantly saying to yourself the different steps that you're using. If you repeat these steps in your head every time you go through the balancing uh, process, you'll definitely know the steps. You won't have to memorize them later.